Welcome to the second part of this war plan tutorial, introducing the map and menu. Let's take a closer look at the menu items and the top row buttons. In most menu items, you will have a country selector. Selecting a country flag indicates which country you are using the current menu system. The production screen has four sections. The top half is your economy and support items, the bottom half is your military production. In the upper left hand corner, your left column shows the country's production and capacity of various resources. The centre column is upkeep costs for maintenance, repairs and upgrades. The right column is what you have remaining after deductions. The top centre is reinforcement and upgrade allocation. The upper right shows your support pool and which support elements are currently in use. The four tab bottom section, the military and support units that you can build. The convoy and escort menu item has three sections. The top half allows the player to create trade agreements with other countries. There's an extra country selected in the menu item so you can select the target of a trade. The lower left shows the current trade convoys that are running. Some convoys will bring resources, others will bring in supplies. The hexagon toggle just above this section will toggle showing resource convoys or supply convoys on the top of the list. The bottom of the green down arrow will take you to the hex where the supply convoy it is linked is going. The bottom right area shows you how many unassigned escorts you have and all the convoy routes on the map. An icon appears next to the convoy route in which you have merchant marine shipping resources through. Players can add and subtract escorts to any convoy route that they have resources going through. Allied escorts will show up as part of the total amount of escorts in that route. Advancements have two large panels and one small one. The small panel on the upper left tells you how many unassigned researchers you have. Similar to convoys and escorts, you can assign researchers to different advancements. In the lower left, you'll see a list of advancements and the current progression year for that advancement, how much investment you have in that advancement, and the progression towards the next year. The lower right side shows how the attributes increase for these advancements selected. The highlighted yellow column is your current year in that advancement. The war panel allows countries to declare war, negotiate peace, influence, and intimidate other countries. For this tutorial, I have diplomacy turned on to show you what these features are. Just above the country selector, you'll see Germany's influence power, since it is the selected country. The small blue flag represents how many influence points Germany has. The star represents how many victory points accrued, and the right displays the amount of victory points required for major and minor victory. For a side to have a chance to win, they must have at least one major power, but still not conquered on their side, and the required victory points. All the information shown on the war panel for currently selected country. In this case, it shows Germany is at war with England, France, Canada, and Poland. A player can scroll down with the mouse scroll wheel, or use the slider to view all other countries. The left side will show cross guns for war and a dove for peace. Ness is a flag for the country on the list and the name. A player can click the flag to take them to the capital of that country. The alliance column shows which side that country is on. A fairly grey alliance means they are loyal to that alliance, but have not joined yet. Status tells you how far they are along to join in the alliance they are loyal to. It's possible to influence a country to switch sides if their status is less than 100%. The morale column tells you the willingness of what country to surrender. Some countries like the Soviet Union never surrender. Countries like France and Italy surrender without taking all their production and manpower urban areas. The bracketed number is what a player needs to reduce a country to to allow a negotiated surrender. If there is no bracket, a player must take all the production and manpower cities from that country to force them to surrender. The influence column shows you how strong they are politically. The higher the influence, the harder it is to influence and intimidate countries. The four buttons on the right are to declare war, influence, intimidate and negotiate peace. Influence nudges a country towards your alliance. Intimidate can move a country towards your alliance a lot but has a small chance of success. If it fails, the country gets a large gain towards your enemies. Negotiated peace only appears if the morale of the country drops below their bracketed number. The enemy is not required to accept a negotiated peace. Reports and statistics have four buttons that show information on the game. The report button is the same information from the start of the turn. The force and casualty buttons are totals throughout the game. The unit button lists all the units you have on the map. You can sort them by different methods at the bottom and use the toggle to flip the order. The combat logs show combat information on the current and opponent's turn. You can click on one of the combat logs and it'll take you to the site of the combat. Combat logs give details about combat that occurred. The losses button shows you the current casualties since your last move. Deployment shows you which units are being built, their name, their strength and what date will be available 
to be deployed on the map. When a unit is ready for use, a deploy button will appear for the unit selected. This will show all the hexes a unit may deploy to. All the different toggles across the top tell you what can be shown on the map and what the hot key is for. These two toggles allow players to lock keys for combat. In the combat video, these keys will be covered. The battle toggle has an additional function. If a player hovers over the key, it will show the condensed results about the last battle fought. By turning this toggle on, the information will stay visible throughout the game. The last four buttons show victory point hexes allow for undos and a move to previous or next unit with operational points remaining. The undo last move button can only be used when a unit moves without interfering with another unit. Moving next to an enemy, overrunning, and airfield or navy prevents an undo. If you want to get a quick start on the game, use the help button which will show different categories and a quick summary of play. Most things you can't do in this game will give you a pop-up message as to why. Thanks for watching.